All right, uh, this is uh, section 4.4, and there are actually two topics in uh, this section. They are related. The first one is uh, it's called the linear congruence equations in one variable that we going to cover in this lecture. And in another lecture, we will go over uh, systems of uh, linear congruence equations and the Chinese remain not here. All right, uh, the objectives of this uh, section, or the part of this section, first we're going to introduce some uh, concepts related to congruence equations in one variable in general, that is in, 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 in actually uh, for polynomial type congruence equations. And then we're going to concentrate on the study of linear congruence equations in one variable and we're going to give the necessary and sufficient conditions for the solvability of such uh, congruence equation as well as the uh, number all right, of solutions which we're going to define what we mean by you know two solutions being distinct. Then we're going to look at uh, examples how to solve uh, linear congruence equations, and then we're going to develop some uh, algorithms for solving uh, linear congruence equation, especially when the uh, coefficients in the modulus becomes uh, big. All right, so let's get started with uh, the concepts that are related. And these are pretty much similar to uh, any types of equations in mathematics when we talk about uh, solving equations, equations in one variable or even more. There are certain vocabulary, certain concepts that we need to uh, make sure uh, we understand. All right. So uh, again, I want to start in general. Okay. So we're going to assume that, that f of x equal a sub n, x sub n, a n minus 1, x minus 1, and so on. Be a polynomial with integer coefficients, because all the i's are integers. All right, by a, uh, actually to be, you know, completely accurate, we should say by a polynomial congruence equation in one variable, but I want to remove that word polynomial. By a congruence equation uh, we mean An equation of this form f of x is congruent to zero. You know, you put zero in here, mod m, where m, of course, is a fixed. Positive integer. All right. So it's really like similar to uh, you know a polynomial equation where we said f of x is equal to zero. Now uh, when we talk about equations, of course we refer to an equation of a certain degree, and this is going to be reflected on, of course, the degree of the polynomial. All right where we require that the an not equal to zero, then we say this polynomial of degree n. And congruence equations, well, or when we talk about you know, polynomials mod n, if you wish, then we, this requirement an does not equal to zero is not accurate, all right? So uh, what we would like to have the an is not to equal 0 mod m, all right? So uh, 
if the a n is not equivalent to zero mod m, and this is equivalent, to, we can say this one that m does not divide a n. All right, then the congruence equation has degree n. So we refer to uh, the highest exponent provided that this condition is satisfied as the degree of the uh, congruence equation. Because if a n is congruent to zero mod n, means that first term here, the highest term, this is equal to zero. This is really what this means. All right. Okay. Let's move on to uh, another concept. An integer x sub zero is called a solution to the congruence equation if when we substitute for x by x sub zero, this actually this congruence relation this whole because it's true, okay? So whenever we are sitting here, we call this is a conditional, okay? So this is a conditional congruence. Now when we plug in a number, this becomes actually, uh, it becomes a true. Another thing is uh, by a solution set, Uh, a congruence equation we mean all distinct we got to uh, underline this distinct solution is that the congruence equation if we mean uh, actually we mean the set of all let me put this the set of all all right so the all distinct solution of the congruence equation That is those integers, okay, that actually satisfy something you say or make the congruence equation whole. Uh, you need to explain what, what does uh, this distinct mean. All right. Uh, one other concept is two congruence equations equivalent to each other. Because this idea of the equivalence of equations is at the root of solving equations. This, the idea is to replace an equation by an equation that is equivalent to it, uh, which means they have the same solution set, and it is similar. So you just keep simplifying. All right? So I want to make sure that we put this in, all right, to congruence equations are said to be equivalent if they have the same solution set.
or to build it in a different way. Suppose we are given two congruence equations, uh, they are equivalent if x sub zero a solution for the first one and it's a solution for the second. And if we have a solution for the second one, it's a solution for the first one, and this is true for all possible solutions. Okay. Uh, the next thing is we would like to distinguish between how we can define two solutions to be uh, actually different. Okay. So all right, this is as a fact. Actually, we did prove this. Okay. And look like this. If x sub zero is a solution for a congruence equation, then any integer that is congruent to x sub zero mod m is also a solution. All right? We like this fact. If x sub zero is a solution to the congruence equation f of x congruent to zero mod m, then any integer u that is congruent to x sub zero mod m is also a solution. And this further from a property that we have shown actually in section 4.1, if two numbers are congruent mod m, then any combination of them is going to be congruent to each other. And we did show that for if you choose a polynomial, this becomes congruent to f of x sub 0. But since f of x sub 0 also is congruent to 0, because it's a, it's a solution, mod m. So it makes the f of u actually satisfy the congruence equation. So, and uh, we say two solutions are, are distinct if they are, they must be solutions to start with, if they are incongruent. mod m. <clears throat> so to uh, put it in a slightly different language, so x0 and x0 prime are distinct solutions if f of x sub 0 is congruent to 0 mod m to make it a solution and f of x sub 0 prime is congruent to 0 mod m and one other condition need to be satisfied that they are not congruent to each other mod m okay so that's why we call them incongruent Okay, one other thing, a continuation of this statement in here, this one and x sub zero is not congruent to x sub zero prime on n. Yeah. So this is the way we count that number of solutions to be incongruent. Now, uh, definitely if x sub zero is a solution, then 
every number that is, as I said, congruent to x sub zero is a BS illusion, which means that there are infinitely many integers, individual integers, that are, you know, seducers. But when we count, we only count actually in a complete residue system mod m. All right? So at most, at most, you know, the number of solutions for a congruence equation is going to be at m, all right? Because all others, they're going to be, all other integers are going to belong to one of these congruence classes. Well, right, let's look at an example before we start uh, concentrating on uh, linear congruence equations. All right. Uh, so here's a polynomial congruence equation of degree 5. We're not going to be really very much interested in solving, you know, uh, polynomial congruence equation in general. We will be looking at specific uh, cases later on, but uh, for most of the time, we're going to be working with uh, linear. Equation. All right. So here's the example. So we have uh, this equation, x to the fifth plus x plus 1 is equal uh, congruent to 0 mod 7. Okay. So the degree of this, of course, is 5 because the coefficient 1 is not congruent to 7. Congruent, okay, to uh, mod 7, means congruent to 0 mod 7. All right? Uh, now, a complete residue system for this, which means uh, the possible solution are coming from this. A complete residue uh, system mod 7 is, of course, this is what we call the uh, least non negative one 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. All right? Now, Then by trial and error, since the mod, the, the modulus is, is very small, we can actually check one of these number one at a time, one at a time, and see which one actually satisfies this congruence relation. Uh, later on, we're going to learn for linear, you know, congruence equation, there are more effective methods for, you know, besides just inspection or besides uh, trial and error. For this one, uh, we're going to see that x equal 2 and x equal 4 are solutions. Again, if you plug in 2, you get 35 in here. Question is, is this congruent to 0 mod 7 or not? But you do the calculation in here, and you can actually reduce mod 7 as you go along. If you don't want to even add, uh, again, mod 7. So you get 34, 35, and 35 is congruent to 0 mod 7. So yes, it does satisfy. Now, for also you can check, moreover, these are two distinct solutions, okay? So these two, the two solutions are incongruent. Mod 7. All right? Because they are not congruent to each other, 2 is not congruent to 4 mod 7. That's what we mean by, of course, incongruent mod Seven, so these are two distinct solutions. And in fact, turns out these are the only ones, which I, as again, I get just checking by for these. 
Now, here's one thing which is different or unlike uh, regular uh, polynomial equations. As you know, this uh, if this is just a polynomial equation in this world to zero, then it has five solutions, okay? Uh, counting multiplicities, of course, but we know that it does have five complex and real solutions to that, all right? So congruence equation is going to be the slightly different than regular type equations. All right, one other thing, of course, you can take any number that is congruent to 2 mod 7, 9, negative 5, and so on. Okay, so there are infinitely many uh, integers that are actually solutions to this. So these are all solutions. Now, you can choose 2, you can choose 9 as a representative, or you can choose negative 5, and so on. But the practice usually is we select solutions from the uh, a complete residue system that is, we, we call it the least non negative. Okay, uh, complete residue system. There's the values that are either zero or positive. All right. Now we need to uh, move into the special case of uh, linear congruence equations in one variable. That's what we are interested in throughout actually this. Uh, section and when we even deal with congruence equation, just one bit. This is when actually the polynomial is linear, except when we write it usually we don't write it, you know, f of x squared, f of x equal to x plus b, if you wish, congruent to zero, we write it in a slightly different way, okay? So here's the definition. Uh, by a linear congruence equation in one variable We mean an equation of the form AX congruent to B mod M, where A and B are integers. M is a positive integer, and A is not congruent to zero mod M. Or as I said equivalently, we can say this one, M does not divide M. All right? So a very simple equation, and all the vocabulary that we talk about uh, in general for congruence, polynomial congruence equation applies to here. What we mean by solution, what we mean by two, uh, you know, linear congruence equation are equivalent to each other. What do we mean by, uh, you know, solution set, and uh, you know how to count different number of solutions as well. However, in here we. Uh, have a necessary and sufficient condition uh, for the solvability of uh, this simple type of equation. So there is this big theorem that we're going to state and prove. Right, so this is theorem 4.7. And it reads the uh, linear congruence equation in 
AX congruent to B mod M. Is solvable if and only if D divides B where B is the greatest common divisor of A and F. All right. As a result of this, of course, because this is an F and only F, just let me put the in parentheses. So if D does not divide B, then the congruence equation has no solution. Has no solution. Of course, this is implied by the if and only if, just for double emphasis. Moreover, the number of distinct solutions is exactly equal to that's what it is all right even we can say a little more all right about the nature or the type of solution but let's leave this one in for the proof okay means all that we need is one solution and then we can find all other solutions from this particular solution exactly like we did where uh, Therefore, D equations in uh, two variables. In fact, we're going to find out that a uh, linear congruence equation is equivalent to a Therefore, D equations in two variables. Okay? So there are several things that we need to establish in here. One of them is this, this is an insufficient condition for solvability. All right? Then we need to uh, count the different or you know the distinct solutions of the uh, of the equation and show actually these are this thing and also come up with the uh, what they are you know what are the the solutions so let's get started in the book so let's start by assuming that. Uh, uh, D divides, okay? So we're going to go this way. Assume that D divides B. And what we want to show that actually the congruence equation is, it, it has a solution. All right? So, uh, so let's say, uh, what does this imply here? D implies B that B is equal KD for some integer k. All right, now also we know that since D is the greatest common divisor of these, all right, then we can write D since D is the greatest common divisor of A and M, then we know that there are there exist two integers. Let me call them R and S. This is why there exist R, S, and Z, such that D is equal A, R plus M, S. Uh, okay, so we have these integers. Now let's multiply this equation by K. Okay, so we're going to multiply by k. The other proof of this is a little long, but it is very straightforward. I mean, there is no very much tricks in it. 
All right. So with uh, multiplying by k, this we, we have then k d is equal uh, a r k plus m s k. Well, this means that this is equal to b is equal to a r k plus m s k. And now this is congruent to just A times RK mod M. The reason for this because there is a multiple of M in here. So this is this term is congruent to zero mod M. Alright? So what we left is with the first term. But this means, okay. Uh, if I write this one talk like this way, actually, this congruent to be mod m, this means that uh, x sub 0 equal rk is a solution to the congruent equation. The other way around, let's assume that uh, we have a solution and you show that the great common divisor divides. Okay. So we're going uh, this way. So let's assume that x sub zero is the Solution equals to the congruence equation, and this implies that a x sub zero is congruent to b mod m, and this implies that m divides this difference all right. One other thing is uh, we have D divides both A and M, okay? D being the greatest common divisor implies D divides A and B divides M. All right. Then D divides a linear combination of these. Okay, so this implies D divides a combination of A and M. And uh, well, let's uh, take this combination so that it gives us actually B. So uh, what we have it here is. So if we take the uh, the combination is actually uh, uh, let's see it here. So let's go in here and say this one is going to be actually a x sub zero minus b is equal uh, m q. All right. All right, so, uh, so what we have in here, uh, let's take actually this, uh, let, let me write the B in here uh, as AX sub 0 minus MQ. So the linear combination we're going to take is this, so this is AX sub 0 minus MQ, and this is of course equal. All right, so it does, uh, D does divide B. All right, the next thing we want to do is to uh, actually being able to write what the solutions are and show that there are exactly the solutions. All right, and uh, to do this, so let x sub 0 be a solution and we're going to 
consider uh, actually this a times x sub zero plus let me see what simple is k m over d. Since actually d is a great common divisor, so m, you know, for a and m, so m over d is actually is an integer. All right? And uh, so if you consider this, I claim actually this is where k is actually is any integer. Okay? Now I claim that let me call this is actually uh, x, sub, x sub k, okay? So let me call this is x sub k because it does depend on, uh, on k. So the claim is x sub k is a solution to the congruence equation for every k now all we have to do is actually see, you know, it's satisfied. So we have uh, the a x sub zero plus k m over d. This is equal a x sub zero plus a multiplied by k m over d. All right. But we know that a x sub zero, this one is congruent to be mod m and plus, of course, the other part. Uh, so this is b plus the. Uh, let me put this is uh, actually m times a k over d. Okay, mod m. Now, again, this is an integer because a over k is it's itself an integer because, it, you know, this is the greatest common divisor. So this is actually is equal to b plus m. We can call this is actually k prime, all right? And this is congruent to b mod m because this is a multiple of m so this is congruent to zero mod m. All right, yes, it is a actually a solution. All right, the next thing I want to show that uh, if we have x sub zero and x one are uh, solutions of the congruence equation then x one of them is going to be of this form. Okay, let me actually see what we have in here. What we have shown in here that any integer of this form, x sub k equal a, x sub zero plus k, m over d is a solution. I want to show that if there is another solution, I don't know if it is of this form. It must be of this form. All right. So let's assume we have x sub zero, which we know it doesn't exist. At least one solution we know exists. Okay? And I want to show that if there is another solution, then it must be expressed in terms of x sub zero according to this rule. Okay? So let x sub zero and x sub one be solutions to the, the congruence. All right? I'm not saying these are distinct. So my statement is, you know, the congruence equation has a unique solution. This is not, this is a bad statement. I'm not saying these are actually distinct. But let's assume we have these solutions. All right? Then I claim that x1 is equal x sub 0 plus some k, okay, m 
over D for sum K and Z. Now, this is different than the previous statement. The previous statement, it says that uh, actually we need, uh, let me see here, we need actually uh, prop, prop, that's what we need. Okay, in the previous statement, we said that the X sub K, which are all of these are solutions for N. In here, I am looking at a solution that I don't know what form of it, and my claim it is, has this form, all right? Now, since x sub 0 and we're going to prove that link, okay, and x1 are solutions, this implies they satisfy A, a B, sorry, a mod M, and A, x1 is congruent to B mod so together, this means that A, now remember these are now numerical values. So this implies A x sub 0 is congruent to A x1 mod M. And this is equivalent to saying that M divides, uh, let me put this one in the right order. I want this to, uh, to be the, uh, let me put the x1 to this side, okay? So I want to get the exact form, x1, x sub 0. All right, so this means uh, m divides a, and uh, let me factor out x1 minus x sub 0. Now since, uh, and this implies, one more thing, that uh, a times x1 minus x sub 0 is equal to kf for some, K and Z. Now we are almost there. Uh, it means that we have the uh, A X1 minus, let me see in here. All right. Right, right. I want to actually let me let me write uh, before we go in here. Okay, so I wanted to uh, divide. So we want to divide by a. I want to cancel the a by a. But when we do this in congruence, is this in a by a? Okay. Remember that we have to adjust. The, uh, the, the modulus, so this implies that x1 is congruent to x sub 0 mod m over d. We need to get m over d. And, and this implies that m over d divides x1 minus x sub 0. Now we can write this is as an equation. And that implies x1 minus x sub 0 is equal to m over d multiplied by k for sum integer k. Finally, we can say that x1 is equal to x sub 0 plus m over d k. So what we have shown, we have shown that uh, any solution, this, so any solution for the congruence equation is expressed in terms of actually just this one solution. Now, because it's a unique solution, it means that according to the theorem, okay, that this means d is going to equal 1, and you're going to see that x sub 0 and x1 are going to be congruent to each other mod m, because it's going to be a multiple of m. Okay? All right. The next thing we, we want is now we do have 
the uh, solutions, okay, out of this four, let me write it down, and I just want to pick out the distinct ones, okay? So if I want to write the solutions, so the solutions of the congruence, Uh, this x sub zero plus m k over t, where k ranges over all integers. So if you pick a k equal negative one, so you get x sub zero minus m over d. If you pick Negative 2 is going to be 2m over d, and so on. So there it's here. And then when you k is equal to 0, it's going to be just x sub 0, then x sub 0 plus m over d, then x sub 0 plus 2m over d, and so on. So there are infinitely many integers, and all of these are solutions. Now the question is, how many of these are distinct? How many? Uh, distinct. Which ones? Okay. Now, here is the clear. We're going to see that it is going to be just these. And we're going to stop at d minus 1 times m over d. Okay. So let's write this clear. The distinct solutions, or sometimes we call them or the incongruent solution, are given by this. R x sub 0 plus uh, x sub, uh, first of all x sub 0, sorry, and then x sub 0 plus m over d, x sub 0 plus 2m over d, and so on, and x sub 0 plus d minus 1, m over d. So the next one actually will be the same as x sub zero. So they go inside, all right? So the proof. Of course, we have shown that each one of these is a solution, okay? We have shown this. We have shown each of these numbers. Uh, is a the other thing that is, we know that none of these actually are congruent. So this is the first thing. Second thing, uh, note two numbers in the last. In the last are congruent. And the reason for this is the difference between them, you take the difference, all right? Because the difference between any two uh, is not a multiple not a multiple of, of f. The x sub 0 is going to cancel out, and you could do actually this, all right, taking any two of these, and you're going to see that's not going to be a multiple of, of f. All 
All right? So what is left to, to show? We wanted to show that if there is a solution, all right, it's going to be one of these. We know that there exists a K. Remember the previous argument. If X1 is a solution, then it's going to be X sub 0 plus MK over D. Now we're going to see that the K is actually uh, going to be less than or equal to D minus 1. Okay? And it will be done with this. Okay? So here is the last part. Is to show that if X1 is a solution, then the K that goes with that solution must be among these. Okay? So let X1 be a solution of the congruent, to the congruent. We need to show x1 is equal to x sub 0 plus km over d, where the k is between 0 and d minus 1. To do this, we're going to apply the uh, division algorithm. All right. So let's assume that uh, we know that there exists a K. Okay. We know that there exists a K. All right. In Z, such that x1 is equal to x sub 0 plus k m over d. This is we already proved that if any other solution is going to be like this. The only difference in here, of course, we say this is k in f and z. Our objective is to say no, because the k must actually be in there. All right? Or we find a k. All right. Now, by the division algorithm, Well, we're going to apply it to K, actually, and M, all right? We're going to apply it to K and D, so we're going to apply it to, apply it to, uh, uh, as I said, uh, K and D. So this means I can write the K, it's going to be divided by, you know, like actually D. So this is equal to dq plus r, where the uh, remainder r between 0 and less than d, or less than or equal d minus 1. Okay? Let's put it that way. Right. Well, let's see what is, you know, one of the possible values of, of, of r. All right, so let's look at uh, this x sub 0 plus k m over d. This is equal to x sub 0. I'm going to replace the, uh, the k by dq plus r m over d. All right, and uh, so this is actually x1. All right, and uh, well, let's open this up in here. So this becomes x sub 0 plus uh, qm, okay, d cancel out, plus rm over d. All right, the qm is congruent to 0 mod m, all right? So you can see this one is x sub 0 plus rm over d. Well, which means now, what is r1? Where r1, uh, sorry, r is between 0 and d 
minus 1. And that's it. So x1 is actually equal to x sub 0 plus rm over d. So in other words, I did maybe in here, we might say, let me say put this is r in here and we'll to match with my final selection of the, uh, you know, the multiple of that. And that actually uh, finishes the, the, uh, the proof of this theorem. Now, before we get started with some uh, examples and different methods for solving uh, congruence equations, we want to look at uh, a corollary in the case where the greatest common divisor of A and M is equal to 1. All right, so corollary. If, let me just say that we're going to write this one. Yeah. If greatest common divisor of A and M equal 1, then the congruence equation AX congruent to B on M. Is solvable and has a unique solution. A unique solution. By the way, before I uh, go to the proof of this, which is very, very straightforward, in the previous theorem, uh, remember that when we listed the solution, which is x sub 0, x sub 0 plus m over d, and so on, there are, of course, d solutions in, in, in here. All right? So the number of solutions, these are, these are uh, d distinct or incongruent, incongruent. That series. Okay. So this gives us the number. All right. So make sure that uh, I have this. All right. And the proof is, is very, very straightforward. Of course, uh, uh, since the greatest common divisor is this, and we have 1 divides B for every B and Z. This implies that congruence has uh, has solution. And my previous theorem, theorem uh, for seven, it has it has one. The number which is the greatest common divisor. All right, let's get started by looking at some uh, some examples. All right. First, we want to look at something very simple that can be done by almost inspection, and then we're going to develop some algorithms to solve congruence equations. So here's the first example. We're going to solve this congruence, x congruent to 21 mod 36. First we need to generate this actual solver as a solution, the greatest common divisor of 51 and 36 is equal to uh, 3. And the 3 divides the B, which is 21. So this implies the congruence 
has a three distinct cities and a three incongruent cities or distinct cities. And all what we need to do is to find one of them. Okay? One of the things which we can do uh, is to simplify okay, the congruence equation and by replacing it by a congruence equation that's equivalent to this. And one of the properties we say that if I have a, a congruence relation, then I can divide or write by a, a number that actually divides all. This one, this one, and that. Okay? So which is a three? So if I divide by three, okay, divide by three, we obtain a disequivalent uh, congruence relation, which is this, seven mod twelve. Now we can do tri trial and error for taking a congruent, you know, complete residue system for twelve from zero to eleven and just put this in. Turns out that, uh, yes, there is a solution for this. X is equal to negative 1. It was simple to, to check this one in here. All right? Because you get negative 17 and negative 7, that is negative 24. Uh, then you divide as well as divide that. Uh, then we have all the solutions. <coughs> so the solutions is going to be X sub T. All right, it's going to write it like this. And that's going to be actually equal to 7 plus, or actually minus, sorry, x sub 0. Therefore, we're going to start with x sub 0, which is minus 1 plus the, uh, uh, it goes with the uh, 12 uh, t, right? 12 but suppose you get, you know, multiple of the, the m divided by the greatest common divisor, but the greatest common divisor is equal to 1. Now, in here we need the k, of course, equal 0, 1, and 2, to give us the three values. And when we do this, so these are the equivalent solution, uh, it's going to be negative 1. And when x is equal to 1, we get 11. And when x equal to 2, 23. Now, you could change the negative 1 if you want to make this is a positive uh, number by adding a 17 to this. Okay, sorry, 12. Uh, or uh, 12 you get 11, then you get 23, then you might add actually a multiple of, uh, of, of, uh, uh, of a 12 to make this. Uh, which is not congruent to, to this. Uh, I'll try to see which one is. Uh, so we want that negative one to be congruent to some something x sub zero, not sub, well, I think it was x sub one mod the 12. Uh, if you take a uh, Actually, if you take this is a 3, if you take t equal to 3 in here, you get 36, uh, 35. So this is 35. So you could replace this by 35. Okay, you get out of this. Not necessarily means it's any better, but you want you know, just natural numbers. All right, so this is, uh, was easy because the modulus is actually uh, small, so we can actually do it by trial and error. Now, we need to move on to start uh, getting uh, more effective methods of solving, okay? Uh, first, I want to show that uh, every linear congruence equation is equivalent to a linear Diophantine. Every linear congruence equation is 
is equivalent to a linear diophantine equation in two variables. All right, so let's assume that we are given, okay, here's the proof. So let AX congruent to T mod M be the congruence equation Now, let's assume that uh, 
The concurrence equation has a solution, and then I want to show that the Lafontaine uh, equation has a solution. Well, it's very, very, very straightforward. We so just write what we're supposed to do. So uh, let's assume that D divides B and X sub zero is a solution to AX from going to be mod F. This means that it's satisfied mod M this whole. And this again implies that M divides AX sub zero minus B. And again, this implies that AX sub zero minus B equals MY sub zero for some Y sub zero in Z. Now we have a specific value for Y. We have uh, not variables anymore. And that's it. So this implies that AX sub zero minus MY sub zero is equal B uh, has a series. And what would we need in both the, uh, you know, the linear congruence equation or the linear equation to find one solution, then we know all the solutions are determined by D, which is the next common device. Uh, conversely, you just reverse this argument. If there is an x sub zero, y sub zero, then you could go with the, uh, you know, with the arrows reversed and you are done. All right? Now, what does this uh, tell us? It tells us that uh, all the techniques that we have learned in solving uh, the Fantine equation we can use to solve a uh, linear congruence equation just by simply turning this into a Fantine equation. We remember we learned uh, the Euler's method and uh, of course using the Euclidean algorithm. Okay. Now I'm going to give an example of the Euclidean algorithm how to use, one more time. So in here, let's say we uh, want to solve this by turning it into a Lafontaine equation. Solve uh, 9x from going to 12 mod uh, 15. Of course, all the numbers and coefficients and modulus are, we take them to be small because we are doing hand calculations. But the idea about the algorithm that we will develop is, you know, use in, uh, in conjunction with a computer. So you don't want to use hand calculations for very, very big numbers. All right, so this is equivalent to, remember from our general discussion, uh, this. Uh, actually, this is uh, 15 y, and this is equal to 12. Okay, so this is the Lafontaine uh, equation. Now, to solve this, remember that uh, first of all, we can actually reduce this. We could get the greatest common divisor, first of all, of 9 and 15 is equal to 3. And the three divides as well. So it is solvable. The same thing in here. Uh, this is solvable. So again, when we divide by three, so we get the 3x minus 5y equal 4. Now, the way we find the solution for this is we uh, since the greatest common divisor is equal to three, we know I can express the three as a multiple of the 9 and 15. And uh, if you apply the division algorithm, you get that uh, this one is uh, 9 multiplied by 2 plus 15 multiplied by negative 1 is equal to 3. So this is the kind of the x values and the all r and s you get in here. Uh, 
All right. Now, in order to have a solution for this, what we need to do, we need to multiply this is by 4. So if I multiply by 4, all right, we get the 12 is equal to, and we're going to keep the coefficient 9 in here times, uh, this becomes 8 plus 15 multiplied by negative 4. So then we have a, the x sub 0 is equal to 8 is a solution. Actually, it's part of the solution for the Lafontaine equation at the same time as it is a solution for the congruence, or the congruence equation. Now, once you have uh, this x sub 0, of course, you can find the other. For us, the negative 4 here, which is the solution that is good with the Lafontaine equation, of course, it is uh, not of interest to us. All right? All right. There is another couple of algorithms that I want to introduce. And later on, we're going to learn, you know, other methods which uh, amounts to uh, doing, uh, you know, another word, solving systems of uh, linear equations. So we did one linear congruence equation and we convert it into a system, all right, and by solving the system, we obtain a solution for the linear congruence equation, but this needs to be done once we talk about the uh, Chinese remainder theorem. All right. Uh, actually, this is going to take a little bit more time. Okay, let me, uh, actually there are two algorithms that I want to introduce. Let me give the, the shorter one, and then next time I will do the, uh, the longer one, okay? So here's an algorithm. To solve linear congruence. So this way, suppose we are given this, given AX is going to be mod M, where D, of course, divides, all right, now we can address it with the case where we have a situation. Third of all, uh, this congruence equation is equivalent to, I can multiply by negative one. All right, so for this reason, if I have a congruence equation, all right, and it is negative, then if I consider the congruence equation where I multiply it by a negative, then A becomes uh, positive. So for this reason, we restrict ourselves Where to the case where A is bigger than C. So you don't need to worry about A being negative. All right. Uh, so this is one thing we can do. The next thing is I am going to apply the division algorithm. Okay. So I A we can say A is equal to QM plus R. Alright? Now uh, then A and R, okay? 
they would be congruent to each other, right? So we have a, if, I, if I substitute in here, so A X congruent to B mod M, this is equivalent to substituting for A by Q M plus R X congruent to B mod M. And uh, the QM X is going to be equal to zero. So this becomes R X is congruent to B mod M. So in other words, the original equation, this one and this are equivalent to each other. And the, the thing in here, the R, of course, is smaller than M. Okay. Our goal is, so we can reduce or write uh, A if we have to by looking at a, you know, smaller number, all right? One other thing I wanted to do is I want to replace the uh, congruence equation, okay, so this is the goal of this algorithm we're going to replace AX congruent to B mod M by the congruence which is m y congruent to negative b mod a. Now we do this one if it happens that the a is smaller, all right, than the modulus. Okay, remember that we restrict ourselves to positive. Okay, a then. Instead of solving this, we would be solving, you know, for a smaller modulus. Now the question is, are these two congruence equations are actually equivalent to each other? So I claim that uh, the AX congruent to B mod M is equivalent to M Y congruent to negative B mod A. So changing the modulus from M to A. So let's assume that uh, you know actually this one does have a solution. Okay, so let X sub zero be a solution to AX congruent to B mod M. All right? And I wanted to uh, show that uh, also this is a solution for the other congruence relation. Well, this Again, solution to this means congruent to B mod M, and this implies M divides AX sub zero minus B, and this implies that AX sub zero minus B is equal to M one zero. For some. Y zero in Z. A fixed Y zero in Z. Let's take this. And now this means this implies that uh, if I switch this is around M Y I'll keep the Y zero in here. So this is M Y zero. 
is uh, congruent to negative b mod a. All right? Because in here, you can see we can say that, uh, let me actually make it uh, one more step before we write this. So this one we have ax sub 0 is equal to my sub 0 plus b. Okay? And this means that a actually divides m y sub 0 plus b, but this is a multiple of a sub 0, and this means that m y sub 0 is congruent to negative b mod uh, a. Or, of course, we could write the b with the other side, so we could actually write this as well mod However, since we just got used to write, uh, you know, uh, linear congruences with, you know, a uh, you know, number in both sides, because we write it this way. All right. Conversely, actually, this argument is reversal. Means that if y sub zero is a solution for the this congruence equation, and you just reverse the argument, and you get. Uh, the linear congruence equation also has a signature. All right, now let me look at an example how to apply this. To solve a linear congruence. Here it is, so here's the example. And the sum twenty two x congruent four mod First of all, the greatest common divisor of the twenty two and thirty is equal to two, and this divides four, so it means solution exists. And we have two different solutions. One thing we can do is to replace the 22 by actually just kind of uh, reducing it mod 30. It doesn't go, but we can divide by 2. Okay, so we divide by 11x congruent to 2 mod 50. All right, now we can replace this, okay, so this is equivalent to 15y, you could call it x as well as you want to do, is congruent to negative 2 mod 11. And the question is, of course, we need to find out what the solution would be. Uh, actually, from the previous I uh, should have said this one when we did the equivalents. Uh, when we have the ax congruent to b mod m, we say this is equivalent to m y congruent to negative b mod a. So if, should have done that, if y0 is a solution to the second congruence, then x sub 0, which is equal to m y sub 0 plus b over a is a solution for the fifth, is a solution to the fifth. And this actually follows from the solution that we got is to solve for x sub 0 and then y sub 0. Remember, we solve the, this, this congruence. 
All right. So we reduced the, you know, the modulus by a little. It was, you know, 15, and now we have 11 in here. And uh, again, if you could do this by inspection. You could actually simplify this little because we could reduce the 15 by 11, which, you know, in the previous case, we were not able. So we can subtract 11 from this, all right, or multiple of 11 if it is bigger than this. So we end up with actually 4y congruent to negative 2 mod 11. And also we can divide by 2 because these are, this one is really prime to this. So we also can divide this is by 2, we get 2y going to negative 1 mod 11, okay? So as far as the greatest common divisor of this is relatively prime to 11, we can divide, okay? If, we, if it's not, then we have to divide also the modules. Now we can actually guess what's the solution in here. So the y sub 0 is equal to 5. So we get 10 plus 1, that's 11 divides. All right. So from here, we want to obtain the solution for this, and the solution for this, what is this formula? M, all right? And the M, this of course is the 15, all right? The original one that we converted that this equation to a equivalent uh, equation for a different modulus. So this one is gonna be five times 15, plus the b, the b is 2, divided by 8 is 11, all right? And all together, uh, this give us actually 7. And the two solutions, and then the other solution is going to be 7 plus uh, 15 times 1, which is 20. All right, so these are the two solutions. Again, once you just find one solution, then you can find the other solutions uh, from this solution. All right, there's one other algorithm. It is a little longer, but it is uh, a better algorithm, okay? Because the that one, you can apply it over and over again. It's, it's, a, it's a process where you will be reducing the uh, coefficients, okay, of the congruence equation. All right, so let me stop right here.